In this part of 2.7, we're talking about vertical stretch and compression. Here we have our parent function, f of x equals x squared. So that's our basic parabola. Over on the right, we have multiplied by 4. And that 4 is outside of the squared part here, meaning I am not squaring that 4. That 4 is not being affected by that exponent outside or on the, on the x there. Okay, that's very important. With this 4 not being affected by that squared part, that's very, very important. That means that it's a vertical stretch. So I have a vertical stretch, and usually we notate that with a VS, so vertical stretch. Now this 4 is also important. What I'm doing is a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. So vertical stretch by 4, meaning my graph is being stretched vertically by a factor of 4. Now let's take a look at what a compression would look like. This time out in front, I have a one-third in front of the x squared. Once again, this one-third is not being affected by my squared part out there. That one-third is not being squared. Okay, Even though the one-third is in parentheses, it's not in the parentheses that are being affected by the square. That's very, very important. So this one-third is not being squared. I can't say that enough. Well, that one-third being out in front, I know that it's a vertical, and because it's one-third, it's between zero and one, it's a compression. So when I'm between zero and one, I have a compression. When I'm greater than one, it's a stretch when I'm talking about my factor. So I have a vertical compression by a factor of one-third. And again, it's a vertical compression by a factor of one-third. That's very important because when we talk about horizontal stretch and compression, you have to think opposite. So it's not necessarily the number that you see, it's the factor that we're using. So here we have a vertical compression by a factor of one-third. Notice how it gets a bit wider. It's being smushed down, so it's like I have a weight on top of it that's smushing this graph down. Quick rule to remember, if the number is outside the function, meaning it's outside the part that's being squared, it's outside the square root, it's outside my absolute value, because we'll see all different types of functions. We know that it is a vertical transformation. Another important rule to remember when we're dealing with compression and stretch, if we are saying the word stretch right here, we need to make sure that we're using a number that's greater than 1. So we'd say a vertical stretch uh, by a factor of 3 or by a factor of 2. We wouldn't say a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half. That wouldn't make sense. If it's a compression, if we're saying a vertical compression, it'd be number between 0 and 1. So we could say a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half or by a factor of 1 third. Now let's take a look at a couple examples for vertical transformations. If we're looking at this first one here, we have a 2 out in front of the x squared. Now that 2 is not being squared, remember, it's just out in front of the x squared. Therefore we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Let's take a look at this next one. Once again, we have a coefficient out in front of the x squared. So the 6 is not being squared. So I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 6. Here we have a couple more vertical transformations. Out in front on this one, we have a 1 fourth. So this is still vertical because it's not the part that's being squared. That 1 fourth is not being squared. So I have a vertical, and since I'm going to be using 1 fourth, I'm going to say a vertical compression by a factor of 1 fourth. Remember when it's between 0 and 1, it's a vertical compression or horizontal compression. When it's between 0 and 1, it's a compression. When it's greater than 1, it's a stretch. So let's look at this one. We have 2 thirds. Well, this is going to be a vertical compression by 2 thirds, by a factor of 2 thirds. All right, and now we have a couple combos here. Now that's fun. So this first one, we have a coefficient out in front of the x squared. Remember, when it's multiplication, we're talking about stretch or compression. Well, 4 fifths is between 0 and 1, so I have a vertical compression by a factor of 4 fifths. Over here, I've got a minus 3. Now, that minus 3 is outside the squared part. Therefore, it's, again, a vertical, so up or down. In this case, we're going down by 3. Let's take a look at the next one. Here... One thing at a time, remember, so we have that 9 out in front. Well, that is a vertical stretch because it's greater than 1. It's being multiplied, so a vertical stretch by a factor of 9. This 4 is inside the part that's being squared, so we have to think opposite because it's a horizontal left or right movement. Well, if it's adding 4, I'm going to go left because I've got to think opposite, so left 
4. And then last, we have a negative 7 out here. I know it's a little hard to see, but that is a negative 7. So I'm going to go down 7. So remember, outside, it's verticals, up, down, or vertical stretch, vertical compression. But when it's subtracted or added, we're thinking up or down movements. So since it's subtracted, we go down 7. And remember, inside the parentheses, like we had here, we have to think opposite. So instead of going right like you think, because that's where the positive numbers are, we actually have to go left.